Hi, I'm Dr. Nancy Lonsdorf. We are living in a very interesting time. I think probably one of the most stressful in our entire lives and very unusual. We've never dealt with this before. So I wanted to share with you today some of the things that we can do proactively for our health that will give us a little more sense that we are on the right track to protect our health in a more proactive, positive way. We all know that we need to wash our hands very frequently. We should not touch our face with our hands. And we know we should avoid groups. We should stay in as much as possible and practice social distancing. Now, I'd like to share with you some of the things that we can do now to be proactive for our health that are supported by scientific research as well as supported by the ancient natural system of medicine called Ayurveda, which I have been using in my practice for over 30 years now. And Ayurveda is really a health system and a science of promoting health and longevity. That's its specialty. And I've been giving these recommendations to patients of mine for over 30 years, sharing them on webinars, writing books about them. And I'd just like to review some of the very most important principles that we know from Ayurveda that are now validated by Western medicine and modern science, and that can really give us a, a boost to our immune system, our overall health, and our emotional well being. This is a very important piece of our health and our immune function because we know when we're stressed, cortisol goes up and cortisol can interfere with melatonin sleep, which is so important for our health and immunity. And it also drags our mood and emotions down. We feel not as good and just directly cortisol suppresses immunity. So let's see what we can do to boost our mood, boost our positivity, and make the most of this situation. Sometimes when we have more time on our hands than maybe we've ever had, um, many of us are working from home and are with our families, and we, have, we don't have that long commute. Maybe there isn't as much work demand right now. So, it's a time we can put attention on our health. And often time is a constraint, so let's, let's get to it. Let's see what we can do now to really be proactive. To begin with, I wanted to say one of the best things we can do for stress, as you may be aware, because maybe you've learned this yourself, is meditation. And particularly for stress, I have found that transcendental meditation is the preeminent mind-body technique that creates very deep rest in the body at the same time that the mind gets a calmness, an inner peace that stimulates that settling down of the body in likewise fashion. And transcendental meditation is something that can dissolve that stressful physiological state one might feel from being kind of wound up with all this kind of stressful input and deliver you to a much more calm inner state. And that's practiced generally twice a day for 20 minutes. If you were ever instructed in transcendental meditation, I really encourage you, if you let your practice lapse at all, to go ahead and get started again and do that 20 minutes twice a day. If you are rusty in the practice, just call up your Transcendental Meditation Center and you can schedule a time to talk with a teacher and get refreshed on how to do your meditation. And it's also available for instruction at this time and they are implementing measures of social distancing of at least six, six feet between people and sanitizing everything so the, the centers are, are are safe in that way. So in any case, maybe you've learned another kind of meditation, or you do yoga, or you found some other means of reducing your mental stress. So this is the time to absolutely be regular with that. And if it's something you used to just do whenever you had time, 
this is a great time to establish that time in your schedule where you can do that regularly. And in fact, I'm going to talk next about daily routine and the value of regularity in our schedule and what we do throughout the day. And try to inspire you to adopt a daily routine now that supports your physical and emotional health. So first of all, I wanted to say that the concept that we know in Ayurveda that is very, very helpful for everything about our health is something called daily routine. And it means keeping our regular schedule, getting up in the morning, at about the same time, going bed, to bed about the same time, eating our meals on a regular schedule. And in fact, Ayurveda tells us the optimal time to get up and go to bed and to eat our main meal. So I'd like to just review that first. So the early bedtime is actually a very interesting concept. Most of us haven't used the term bedtime in terms of ourselves. As adults, we use it for our kids, or our family, but we haven't really instituted it perhaps for ourselves. And this is a really good time. In fact, sleep expert, Professor Matthew Walker at UC Berkeley, who has made his life studying sleep and is actually the author of a very fascinating book called Why We Sleep, which I highly recommend. He has described that one of the most, he says the, the most important recommendation he ever gives to people about their sleep, number one is to have a regular bedtime. And that is because our body has innate rhythms. We used to call them biological rhythms or we could call them you know, the circadian rhythm of the body or the, um, the uh, chronobiology of the body, the time, the, the timing of the secretion of our hormones, including melatonin, which helps us to go to sleep and have a nice sound sleep at night, and cortisol in the morning, which helps us get up and be bright and bushy-tailed to start the day. So we want to like ride these natural rhythms, and then it's like riding waves in with the tide rather than trying to swim upstream against the tide. In other words, our body will feel much more relaxed, much more at ease and comfortable. We'll wake up feeling more refreshed if we have this habit of following a daily routine according to these timings. Now, uh, one of the principles in sleep science is that some people have a melatonin that's our sleep hormone or timing hormone for sleep that starts to be secreted uh, at about eight o'clock at night. That's the majority of people, eight, eight, nine, thirty, eight, eight, thirty, or nine. And those people, we could call them early birds, and they tend to get sleepier e earlier in the evening and get up a little bit earlier than others in the morning and feel really bright. Whereas other people are what are called night owls and they tend to stay up late and then get up late or they have to get up in time for work and then they feel tired all day. So they have higher risks of hypertension, cardiovascular disease, shorter lifespan, et cetera. And interestingly, I just saw a study that was published in Sleep Medicine and it's um, making the point that they did a study on night owls and they found that night owls can actually go to bed earlier. And if they start to go to bed two, three hours earlier, like at 11 or even 10, instead of say one in the morning, that within just three weeks, they register less stress, feeling much less stress and less depression. And interestingly, research on sleep time and depression in teenagers has borne that out as well, and there was quite a bit of research on that, but this is the first study I saw in grown-ups as well, and Ayurveda has held for, well, I guess 5,000 years plus now, that going to bed earlier in the evening is more rejuvenative for our bodies, our immunity, for our neurotransmitters, so we feel more alert and bright and clear the next day, even if we get the same number of hours of sleep, that sleeping from one in the morning until nine in the morning will be different than sleeping from 10 until six. 
So ideally, try to align your bedtime closer and closer to the earlier times, like around 10. Uh, maybe that seems just ridiculously early for you, but at least try to get it by 10.30 or 11. Because Ayurveda tells us that's a swing time. Uh, melatonin starts to be produced earlier in the evening, and if we can ride that wave, we'll fall asleep more easily and we'll sleep more deeply and feel more refreshed. So if we stay up past about 10, the longer we stay up past 10, our body is entering a different phase. It's, it's going into a metabolically active phase. And that's actually being shown by modern research that the physiology at night and the liver function and digestive tract are doing very different things than they are around noontime. So our recommendation and what I recommend to you is to try to move your bedtime forward and try to then stick to a regular bedtime and see how you feel. You might feel amazing in the morning. I have a diehard uh, uh, night owl as a colleague. And the other night he said to me that he had gone to bed early, like nine o'clock, I guess he was very tired and he woke up at six or seven and he was so fresh. He said, yeah, I really felt different. So even the night owls now can become early birds and I would encourage you to go in that direction. So we've talked then a little bit about sleep, but I'd also say that getting off the devices earlier in the evening also helps your melatonin secretion and will give you better sleep. So I recommend by eight or nine at the latest, you get off the computer and get off the iPad, the devices, your phone, and do something much more uh, sedate and relaxing, just kind of in the physical environment. Maybe you wash the dishes or you fold some laundry or you get the kids ready for bed and read them a bedtime story from a book and turn the lights down. That's also been shown to interfere with our sleep and melatonin. It's not just the blue light, uh, but it's also the brightness of the light. And some people even wear those little orange blue blocker glasses and they can be helpful, but in my personal experience, if you stay up until 12, even though you're wearing your blue blockers, uh, you probably won't sleep as well. So also, you know, in these times, the tendency is to try to get as much information as possible in what's happening, what's coming, what do I have to prepare for? What do I have to worry about today that isn't here yet? Maybe we'll never come. I mean, this is a time for what we could say being more in the moment, being educated, keeping informed, taking measures that you're supposed to take, but also not giving in to maybe that obsessive tendency to just be on the computer and search and read and feel this and feel that and, and live so many emotions. And a lot of people end up doing that, you know, well into the night or well towards bedtime, whatever that may be, 10, 11, 12, and they get off and their mind and nervous system is filled with all of that worry and stress. Then they try to go to sleep and you know that's not the ideal transition to sleep. So you know this is not a time we wanna lose sleep. Uh, you know, we wanna just do the best we can. It's stressful time. And we have to think about things we prefer not to think about or that are stressful, but we can also manage that. That's about, it's about managing that and making some wise choices and, and give, putting some boundaries around it. All right, um, now you probably all already know, also keep your bed, bedroom dark and try to, um, try to get the whole house to settle down if that's an issue for you. And we'll talk more about sleep in another episode because it is so amazingly powerful and it's really restorative and can make you feel so much better. So next, diet. I'd like to share with you a few points from particularly Ayurveda. First of all, we know having a whole foods diet, a more Mediterranean diet, plant-based or primarily lots of vegetables and fruits and fresh, fresh vegetables, fruits, uh, some 
you know, minimize the grains or, you know, depending on your type, Ayurveda rec uh, recognizes that people have different natures and their physiology and metabolism differ. So what the keto diet might be just perfect for one person, but for another person, they really don't feel good with that. And I had a patient like that who uh, went on the keto diet and within a couple, uh, like two, three weeks, her menstrual cycle was off. She wasn't sleeping. She got anxious. It just really wasn't the right diet for her. So be mindful of your body as well. And don't artificially strain and stress and impose something extreme. This is not a time to make extreme changes. This is a time to make practical common sense changes you know, if you're used to picking up fast food or you're used to eating out all the time, this is a time you can, you know, practice some, some home cooking, which also Ayurveda says, because it has your consciousness in it, it's a better food. It's more nourishing on the emotional and spiritual level for your family and those you're cooking for, or even for yourself, than something that you may buy out and somebody maybe was very stressed preparing it and you never really know the quality of the ingredients. So here you can control the quality and you can make it yourself and use a lot of vegetables. And, and that should be the, the main meal of the day actually should be around 12 to 1, 1.30 at the latest. And that way you'll have the best digestion of the food. And I would recommend, you know, whatever protein you're used to having, that's fine, but have it at lunchtime. Have about a half of your plate cooked vegetables. That's a really good thing for fiber and antioxidants and, and good digestion. And favor warm cooked foods at this time. Yes, some fresh, some raw, fresh fruit, uh, avocado, if you love salad, have a, some salad, but don't have that as your main meal. This is a time to put in warm food, warm drinks. Actually, it's very antiviral to put in hot, hot, hot things in the, the, the ear, nose, throat region. So Ayurveda has always said that one of the best things we can do, not only for our digestion, but also for our overall health is to drink boiled hot water. And that's what I'm doing today. And every day now, I've been doing this on and off for oh, probably about as long as I've been practicing, 30 some years. And this is sometimes um, my favorite recommendation when people have a very busy life and they can only integrate one or two or three things. And I said, just drink hot water about every half hour, just take a few sips. And this actually some of the experts are recommending now because that helps to flush anything that we're breathing, that viral particles, et cetera, down into the esophagus and the stomach where the acids will eat it up. And also heat brings the blood flow to the area, which will help keep our, our immune system active and present. And also heat directly inactivates virus. So that's a very simple trick and many people who have chronic digestive problems such as gas or bloating will find that they actually feel better less gas less bloating and probably better regularity as well because hot food and hot drinks help promote good peristalsis so i want to talk briefly about the topic of ama ama is when we don't digest well, we get like a residue in our system. And Ayurveda says, stomach is connected to the lungs. It says asthma, for example, asthma's source is in the stomach because it's how we digest that impacts the, the, the lung health. Now that may sound a little ooga booga, but I think that we'll find as Western medicine has studied sleep, it's studied bedtime, it studied spices and turmeric and all the things that are there in Ayurveda um, and validated them. Uh, now they will eventually find this connection too. So I will just say that many people notice that if they eat like too much dairy, especially cold dairy or ice cream or yogurt, they make it congested. More mucusy and blocked in the sinus area, the nose, maybe get postnasal drip maybe have a cough. So 
that's because the body gets congested. Ayurveda says when we don't digest well or we have food that is either creating this ama, this kind of residue, not fully digested, or kapha. Kapha in the Ayurvedic language means uh, uh, the lubrication in the body. It can get too thick and too congested if we're eating the wrong food. So this is a good time of year to dial back on cheese, especially hard cheese, and yogurt, and Greek yogurt, especially in the evening. Don't eat those things at night because the body's digestion is not as strong and they will tend to create more of this clogginess in the evening. So that's Ayurveda. That's some wisdom from Ayurveda. And all I can say is give it a try and see if it works for you. So we talked about hot water and hot food. And we talked about timing. Have your main meal in the middle of the day. So now if you're home from work, it's not so hard to cut up some vegetables and cook things around noon, 1230, and serve it um, at that time and eat that full meal. You will feel much more satisfied all day. It can help your energy stability and m mental state, actually, your emotional state, not to be hungry or have eaten kind of salty or too sugary or too kind of junky food earlier in the day. So you'll feel really nourished and satisfied and you'll be less likely to snack, you know, later into the night. It'll be easier to stop eating after dinner. So in dinner, make it by six or seven at the latest. And again, no, no uh, curdled things like cheese at night, um, yogurt according to Ayurveda, and even red meat and heavy, heavy foods and dishes like that are better at lunchtime and in the evening. Enjoy soups, maybe some light grains like quinoa, vegetables, um, things like that. All right, so good to have your meal finished by seven and have a few hours before bed where you're just not eating anything. You could have herbal tea or some hot water, um, but your body will cleanse itself better at night. In fact, one of my mentors, Vaija, uh, uh, Vaija, um, Raju uh, once told me, he said that if a person is ill, one of the best things they can do to recover more quickly is in the evening to skip dinner and just have hot water. And boiling the water for five minutes or a few minutes is good because it kind of energizes the water and lightens it, which water kind of, you know, heavy and dense. So um, it gives it that, that energetic quality to penetrate and clear and to help us digest. All right, so last we have, well, second to last, we have stress reduction, stress management. And I just wanted to say here that I've mentioned a couple things, like not to spend too much time on the internet and the news reading all the latest, I mean, keep informed, but put limits on it and don't allow yourself to get drawn in and, and, and too obsessed about it. That will be counterproductive to health. So what I'd like you to do is to find ways, especially if you have a family, find ways to do things together that reduce stress for everyone. I have a colleague who I was talking to today and he He's lucky enough to have a backyard. And he said, yeah, being in the house, he's home from work, working from home, his wife's working from home, his kids are home from school right now. So they're all together. And he said, the biggest thing for us right now, we're staying in and is to manage the stress and anxiety. And he said, well, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna go out, I'm gonna go out with my son and we're gonna play wiffle ball in the backyard. So it's not a time to go to gyms, it's not a time to go to playgrounds and play in monkey bars, but it, if you have an open field near you to go and run around, uh, go outside, take a walk, stay, keep your distance from other people, six to nine feet, um, but just breathe some fresh air, get some sunlight. UV light is very good for our health and our immune system and our metabolism as of course, exercise is a huge immunity boost. Ayurveda says actually the best thing overall for health that has no cost and is available to every person is a morning walk. 
And I will say, if you do that, you will also, you will notice a boost of freshness and you'll, you'll even see it in your face. You might look in the mirror afterwards and, and feel the same way this little kindergartner did when he saw uh, a patient of mine, uh, his teacher, uh, implemented this recommendation. And she wrote me back and she said, Dr. Lonsdor, I went to, did my, I did my morning, morning walk and then I went to school. And she said, I walked in the room and one of the students said, oh, Mrs. James, you look so pretty today. And he said, she said, never before, never before had I had a comment like that. So in terms of enhancing your freshness internally and how you look externally, is a morning walk. So another thing is games. Uh, try to keep your kids from spending the whole day on devices. This is even if they're connecting to school and doing lessons and all that, try to have some break times where you put all put devices aside and you talk or you do a game or you do some exercise. One of my favorite channels, uh, I'm, uh, and, and videos on YouTube is from the learning, the learning, uh, the learning center, and it's called, or no, the learning channel, the learning station, excuse me, the learning station music, and learningstationmusic.com, and they have videos and songs where kids are taking a break with an adult generally and they're boogieing to music and the music is upbeat and the lyrics are fun and they're they're moving everything and you can you can do that with your family and believe me within a minute of turning that on and starting to move you'll all have smiles on your face you won't be able to help it it is such a super stress reducer now maybe there's something else you like to to dance to or move to or even just listen to that makes you feel upbeat. So use these tools, use these experiences, because this is our life. It's not, it's not what we would choose right now, but we, we can choose to make the best of it and to enjoy and to take a little time to break out of all the stress and the cloud. And really, we could say be present and make that presence uh, something that's more enjoyable and connecting socially with our family if you have one or even to pick up the phone and call a friend or a family member just check in on them try not to get too much into the drama of the days but express your you know your caring and but even by just picking up the phone it can be comforting to somebody that you love care about um, maybe haven't talked to in a while and you want to let them know you're thinking of them. These are things that all help lower our cortisol and boost our immunity. Social connection is a huge immunity booster. Another way to um, get more exercise, which is our last, our very last point here is exercise. And you know, if you're stuck inside, or you have to do work from home, this may be a really good time to implement your, your uh, resolve that you, or resolution you put out to the future, which would be to, to have a standing desk. I love standing at my desk. I do it as much as possible. If I'm working at home, almost all the time I'm standing, it took me a little while to get used to it. Um, and the way to get started is to start, well, you may not have, a standing desk officially, but you have a table or you have a desk that if you raised, had something that raised your computer or what you were reading about this far, about, you know, a foot and a half or so or two feet, it would probably be just fine. And what I would, what I've been using actually are a little, a box. You know, everybody has a box and I like the banker's box because it has a separate, like, top that you can put on it with a nice flat firm top but you could use any box that you turn upside down and maybe tape up so your computer not going to fall into it and uh, you can you can put your computer if you have a laptop for sure you know put your computer on it work for 15 minutes if you get tired then sit down just whip the box off and put your computer 
on the on the table sit until you feel a little sluggish or you feel like you know your derriere wants some break you can stand up and then do um, some more work standing and you could also jiggle a little or you could turn on one of those videos and take two or three minutes to to move research has shown that people who stand or when they're standing at the desk they are more productive, more alert, and get more done. So that's, that's pretty good motivation when we're trying to get through some of that work. And of course, that morning walk, I'll mention again, exercise, playing some game if you have a family member, if you can get outside, um, just getting away from the electronics, breathing some fresh air, seeing some nature, maybe there's some tree out there, or even just the blue sky if you live in a city, Maybe there's some grass. These things have been shown just to have in our, in our visual uh, frame, just within our, our visual, um, you know, our, what, we're, what we're seeing, visual field, is shown to reduce stress. People in hospital, for example, who have a window that looks out on something natural, they get better faster than those who are looking at a building or a wall. So we know that nature is very nurturing for us. So let's take advantage of it. Breathing fresh air, as long as we're staying away from other people, is a very good thing for us. As, and, and also, but if it's cold where you are, you know, you want to warm the air. You want to have a face mask of some type or you have, you know, you have a scarf or something. We, those of us like myself who grew up in Wisconsin, we're used to wrapping a scarf around our face and, that helps to warm the air coming in and out. So we don't, we don't wanna cool this area down too much and we wanna wear a scarf or something that keeps the throat area warm. But getting some fresh air is generally a very good thing. So I hope that you have gathered or gained some new tips today and that you will work on integrating something, even just pick one thing, maybe it's the hot water Maybe you start standing at your desk. Maybe you take a morning walk. Maybe you decide to go to bed a little earlier. Whatever you do, I think that you will notice some difference within a few days. And as you start to feel better, even than your norm, this is gonna be a big psychological and emotional boost for your immune system. So I look forward to providing more videos soon and helping you to maximize your physical and emotional well-being as we go through this challenging time. Wishing you the best of health and please take care, do all you're supposed to do, but also be present and try to make the best of the situation and maximize those times where all that world just went away and you're in the moment and you're enjoying life. All the best. Bye-bye for now.